Put your hands in the air if you like to drink beer. Good, because today I'm taking you on the great Belarusian beer adventure. I'm about to go to the railway station, jump on a train, and um, I'll explain to you what it's all about. Let's do it. Up here we've got a list of the romantic sounding names that we can travel to. Stobchi, Smalovici, Asipovici. But we're jumping on train 661, the 753, down to the city of Brest, down on the Polish border. Right, 661, where are you? 661, Vita, Brest. Track 3, platform 2. Track 3, platform 2. What the hell is the difference between a track and a platform? Let's go and find it. Oh my god, how lucky was that? Straight away. Brest. 7.53. I was panicking about nothing. We found it already. Let's jump on the train. Passport one another. No, no. 17th place. Number 17. There are six cities in Belarus that brew their own beer. They are Brest, Lida, Vitebsk, Rechitsa, Babruisk and Minsk. And so I'm going to travel around each of those six cities and try the local beer and have a little look around the towns as well maybe. So um, yeah, I'm now going to have a little bit of sleep because it's very early and um, we've got a five hour train journey ahead of us down to Brest where we're going to begin the great beer adventure. So um, if you want to have a little look around Belarus and you want to see me try some local beers, then um, you're in the right place. Oof. See you in five hours in Brest on the Polish border. Welcome to Brest. Finally, we made it all the way down here in southwest Belarus. I hardly got a minute's sleep. I'm absolutely shattered. But um, let's go to a shop and get a beer, wake me up a little bit, and then I'm going to take you to a place of, um, well, of great historical significance, which I think any of you Second World War history buffs are going to enjoy. So, yeah, let's begin it. Let's go get a beer. Central supermarket. Let's check it out. Shopping center. Fresca pivo. Yes, there was. We've got no idea. No one's got any idea where the breast beer is. Yeah, rechiska the rechiska. Yeah. Well, it's a lovely day and it's a beautiful city, but um, it's becoming a bit of a mission. I thought I was going to get off the train, go into a supermarket, buy a bottle of breast beer, and then, um, yeah, go and show you what I want to show you. But it turns out they don't sell much breast beer in Brest. <laughs> Jeez. So I've got to walk. Oof, I've got to walk a long way. I've got to go across that bridge in the distance. Man. What am I going to do if, <laughs> if old Brest Beer Factory has gone bankrupt? Let's try this big supermarket. If they don't have it here, they don't have it anywhere. It might be some old dusty bottles on a shelf that no one wants. Let's see. Здравствуйте. Брестская пиво есть у вас? Брестская пиво. Это должен быть Брестская. Yes? Oh, слава богу. Sure. We found some breast beer. Wow, thank God for that. The challenge continues. It's called Du Tret Strong. I don't know what it says, but anyway, let's um let's get out of here and let's drink some beer. Wow, breast capiva, the best. On the morning of June the 22nd, 1941, Hitler began Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. 
and it began in the exact spot I'm about to show you, Brest Fortress. Let's go inside and let's have a look around. For the first 12 days of the war, the defenders of the fortress held on under Stuka dive bomb fire, artillery, machine gun charges from the German soldiers on those first few days. They held on valiantly, fought off attack after attack, until finally there was no more ammunition left to defend the fortress and the inevitable happened. At the end of the war, in recognition for what the soldiers went through in the defence of the Soviet Union on that first day, Brest Fortress was named a hero fortress, along with 12 other cities, Smolensk, Murmansk, Tula, Kerch, Novorossiysk, Sevastopol, Odessa, Minsk, Kyiv, Volgograd, Leningrad, Moskva. Well, if ever there was a place that deserved to have a beer raise in its honour on this journey, it is most certainly Brest Fortress. So, um, yeah, let's try the old Brest Piva, whatever it's called. Let's give it a go. To the defenders of the fortress. <sighs> Not bad. Ha! Huh, actually, quite nice. All right, onwards to Lida. I don't think there's going to be any Soviet murals inside Brest bus station, but let's try and find a bus up to Lida. Nothing to Lida, only to Grodna. Через девять минут. Отлично. Да. So yeah, we can't go to Lida direct. We have to go to Grodna. We get in tonight at six something. So, God knows how I'm going to get from Grodna to Lida tonight. Crikey. I might have to crash on Elena's granddad's floor. <laughs> You'll finally get to meet him. Crikey. All right, let's do it. Oh, comfortable. So, what time is it? Eight o'clock, there's a train leaving for Lida, the last train of the night, in 20 minutes. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna try and get on it. Grodna Voxal. That driver looked just like Lukashenko. <laughs> it was a spitting image of the president. <laughs> wow, maybe it was him. Maybe things have gotten that bad for the economy. Anyway, after this train, it's my train to Lida. Bye-bye, Grodna. It's been emotional. Bloody hell, Grodna, what's with your weather? It was like 30 degrees in Brest this morning. And now look at it. Absolutely grim. What's it going to be like in Lida? Grim. Provincial Belarusian train, not like the ones with the beds. Gulag train. The last passenger on the night train to Lida. Everyone's gotten off apart from me. This is the kind of situation where if it was a Russian film, some Gopniks would get on and give me a good old, good old kicking. But no Gotniks, they've all gone home, they've all gone to bed. It's just me, the dark foreigner, heading to Lida. Wow, 
Welcome to Lida at midnight. <laughs> oh, what's that I see in the distance? Oh man. Please have a room, please have a room, please have a room, please have a room. Wie meinst du jetzt meine Nationalist? Angli. Oje, Minsky. They're checking how long I've been here, if I've been in quarantine or not. If I hadn't done my 14 days in Minsk, I wouldn't be allowed to stay. Thank God. Oh, да. Вам надо верить, ваш президент. Мы верим. Да, ну мы рад верим, слышать. Мы все равно боимся. Конечно, конечно. What's this place gonna be like? Oh, kind of what I expected. Pity is a single bed, but anyway. Got a TV, got a fridge, got a nice little kettle for my noodles. A lovely picture. And a little bathroom. And all for the princely sum of, I think, $12 US. A tenner to us Brits. So um, that's it. Yeah, end of the first day of the great Belarusian beer hunt. There's not been much beer, is there? We've only had one. But um, tomorrow that's going to change. We'll definitely find beer in Lida. It's famous for the bloody stuff. And there's something historical I'm going to show you. So, um, yeah, until tomorrow. Good night from Lida. Never thought I'd say that to somebody. Till tomorrow. Hmm. Jesus. All right, day two, let's begin it with some beer and history <laughs> and some snow and frostbite. Oh man, what's happened to the Belarusian weather? It was like 25 degrees yesterday in Brest. This is insane. Guys, this behind me are the walls of the Great Leader Castle, built in the 1300s by the Lithuanians. And it demonstrates just how tumultuous, tumultuous, is that a word? Tumultuous, the history of Belarus is, because since it was built, it's been sacked by the Swedes, by the Poles, by the Russians, by the Germans, by the French, by the Mongols, by the Knights, that's right, they had bloody knights on horseback with swords and stuff and crosses attacking this place. And this, I just bought in a hotel lobby, is Lida beer. It's called Legendary White Beer. Yeah, Legendary Beer. Let's try it. Is it legendary? Not as legendary as the castle. Anyway, a toast to Belarus and its freedom struggle over the centuries. Wow, bloody hell, this is a nightmare. Um, yeah, let's get to the railway station. Time for V-Turbs, let's do it, woohoo! Padayet, padayet snieg. La, 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 la. Možet bit mi vinovati, no ja vsek da kak prežde lublu. Oh, welcome to Vitebsk. Let's go and get a beer. Ooh. What a Soviet looking town. In England, we have streets like Oxford Road and London Street, something like that, Baker Street. But here in Belarus, they have cool sounding names like Red Army Street. Imagine living on Red Army Street. When someone said, where do you live? And you could say, oh, I live on Red Army Street. Or Soviet Avenue. Or 
40 years of the glorious Revolution Road. We should start calling our streets things like that in England and Europe. What street do you live on? I bet it's not as cool as Soviet Army Street. Almost guaranteed. I see a nice Soviet looking shop across the road. Wow. Called Viesta. Hopefully it has some good old Vitebskian beer. Oh, bloody hell is cold. Piva! But the mushi I issue Vitebsky Piva. But you move. Vitebsky Brova. Vitebsky Brova, it's a. Vitebsky Piva, yeah. Super. Thank you. Please. Will you buy it? It's delicious. Very delicious. Super. I got told off for filming in the shop. I'm not allowed to film in shops in Belarus, the lady said. My first enemy in Vitebsk. Right, we've got the um, local beer. And now I'm going to show you something historical again here in Vitebsk. And that was the Soviet shop. With the Soviet shop workers. I'm outside the house of the artist Mark Chagall. Mark Chagall grew up here in Vitebsk. Mark Chagall is the guy who drew the fantastical paintings of Jews flying over the tops of villages in Belarus playing fiddles. Check him out sometime. And I'm now going to try some Dvinsky Brevar, which is the beer that Mark Chagall would have drunk if he was still alive. Actually, he might have done. They first started brewing this in 1850. So, um, yeah, maybe old Mark had a pint or two. Let's try it. I doubt he did. It's rank. Well, that was Mark Chagall's house, which was probably the worst museum I've ever been to. They didn't even have any of his bloody pictures in there. Crikey. All right, on to the next town of Rechitsa, down on the Dnieper. Crikey, let's hope the weather's better down there. I've got a long journey ahead of me. Oh, well, after God knows how many buses and a night in a Soviet hotel, I finally, finally arrived in Rechitsa, an old river trading port on the banks of the Dnieper. So um, let's go and buy a beer and um, look at something interesting. I've met a young man here in Rechitsa who's going to show me where to buy Rechitsa beer, which is made in Rechitsa. <laughs> Right? Right. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. But the uh, line, you, it's not Rechitska beer, but it's very good. I don't want, I want Rechitska. Okay, across... Uh, this dude oh. said, I'm going to show you Rechitska beer. And he came, he said, I lied to you. I don't want you to try Rechitska, I want you to try something else. Okay, across the road. Brother, uh, okay. you've killed me there. Come on, let's go to the other shop. Across let's buy Rechitska. Ah. Oh my God. Why didn't you listen to me when I said Rechitska? You lied to okay. me. Okay, Rechitska, Well, unbelievable. I thought that Belarusian people were honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we've discovered, we've discovered the first liar in Belarus who took me to a shop that doesn't sell Rechitska beer. It was Stop. too good to be true. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Possible? <gasps> wow, Rechitska. Yeah. Wow, which one do you think? Blue one or golden I one? Like you like this one better? Yeah. You want a bottle of Rechitska? Let's have a bottle of wretched, sir. Let's do it. Okay, we found it. That was easy. When your friend doesn't lie to you, you find it straight away. Good man, thank you for your help. Wretched, sir. You're not a real Gopnik. 
What the fuck? You're not a Gopnik. Only Gopniks can do this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Richard's a Gopniks in the house. Hi, <laughs> Brown. So behind me flows the mighty Dnieper River. The Dnieper River that rises up in the hills near Smolensk and comes down through Belarus, down through the Ukraine into the Black Sea. And it was along this river that the Rus tribe came in their boats from Sweden, Vikings. And they founded towns and trading stations like Rechitsa and Kiev all along this river. The Rus is where the people who are from Russia get their name, Ruskis, from that Rus tribe all those many hundreds of years ago. So let's raise a glass of Rechitsa beer to the original Vikings. Nikita, you're a Viking. There we go. Cheers to the Rus tribe. Rechitska Zalasista. That is a good beer. Why did you say it was bad? You don't like it? That's not bad, but no, not a good. Mikita is not a patriot. <laughs> he is not a patriot. He says that he prefers Belgian beer. My man Mikita here was just telling me that a packet of cigarettes, a packet of camel in Belarus costs two rubles. Yeah. Two one ru- rubles. Even one ruble. So like basically a packet of camel costs um, 50p and a bottle of beer costs the same so for like one pound one pound fifty you can have a bottle of beer and a packet of cigarettes wow you brits should all move over to belarus come to Rechitsa. because uh, belarus is a very poor country <laughs> basically that's the reason i suppose okay. mate nikita nice to meet you hey nice to meet you we'll see each other again i hope yeah yeah definitely thank you so much for the tour it's really interesting no, no. and thanks for the beer Goodbye. see you soon my friend Wow, what a legend. All right, off to Babruisk. Well, I've just been trying to get a ticket up to Babruisk from the bus station. There's no buses or trains today, or at least not until later in the evening. So um, I've ordered a cab, a bit cheating, but I've ordered a cab, going to jump in it. And um, yeah, let's um, get up to Babruisk and um, have a beer and buy my T-shirts. This is going to cost a fortune. Buy some merch, for God's sakes. Люди в Речице они боятся коронавирус, в принципе. Вы знаете, кто-то боится, кто-то, ну уже суждено, так суждено. А когда Бачка сказал, что должен надо сауна и водки, они смеялись или что? Ну, конечно, смеялись. Это ж это ерунда. Спасибо, Дим. Right then, we are in Babruis, the second to last town on the Great Beer Adventure. Is anyone else losing the will to live watching this? Because I'm losing the will to live making this. Two more beers, oh, and then we're over. There was only one place I could bring you to for my Babruisk beer, and that is the Babruis Soviet bus station. Are you hungry? If you're hungry, maybe I can introduce you to some Belarusian food at the station. Babrov at the Imne is Babrusk? No. Adlichna. Вкусно? Не знаю. Как вы не знаете? Бабруски пиво, должен знать. Да, пиво как-то мне. Вкусное, вкусное, а пиво дает. It's time to try the old beer from Babruisk, which is called Bobrov. Bobrov from Babruisk. And let's raise a toast to um, Soviet architecture and Soviet bus stations in particular. Say what you want about the Soviet Union, but they sure knew how to build a good old bus station. So, um, yeah, here's to that. Wow, that is the worst beer of the trip so far. Wow, the trip's almost over, thank God. I thought it was gonna take like a day, and this is what, the end of the third day. So um, yeah, let's get to Minsk and grab the final beer of the trip. Let's be done. Well, 
we're back in Minsk, where it all started all those days ago. So um, let's go and have the final beer, some local brew, some local beverage from Minsk. Let's go and do it. Alivaria, the beer of Minsk. Well, we had a good old adventure, didn't we? We've seen some towns in Belarus you might not have seen before, even I haven't seen before. And um, we tried some random beers, some good ones like in Brest and in Lida and some nasty ones like in Babrusk and Vitebsk. So I suppose the final toast should be for the beers of Belarus. It's a good one. Let's try it. Since 1864, Alivaria, brewed in Minsk. A good one. We finished on a good one, thank God. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it, something a little bit different. And um, until next time from No Lockdown Belarus, take it easy, guys.